Manila bus tragedy talk slated for tomorrow. Dozens of people killed in India's stampede, and thousands bid farewell to Vietnamese war hero. Good evening. According to media reports in Manila, Philippine Secretary for Justice Leila de Lima will visit Hong Kong tomorrow. She's expected to meet with those who suffered as a result of the deadly Manila bus hostage tragedy of 2010. But as Evelyn alone reports, both the government and those directly affected insist they've heard nothing about such a visit. Secretary for Transport and Housing Anthony Chung reiterated today that the government wants to keep property cooling measures in place. He said the property market is still volatile and softening the demand curbing stamp duties may send the wrong signal to investors. A new selling point pitched by local property developers is said to be attracting many home buyers. New customers are reimbursed for a substantial part of the amount paid in buyer's stamp duty and double stamp duty. The government says it will not comment on particular sales strategies, but insists that the demand curbing measures remain necessary. <laughs> Secretary for Transport and Housing Anthony Chung said the market is still volatile and that's why the government wants to keep the property cooling measures in place. He explained that any changes to the measures could mislead investors into thinking that the risk in the local property market is gone. And he added that a so-called sunset clause, setting an expiry date for the measures, is not on the table for consideration. The measures introduced over the past year will be up for scrutiny at the Legislative Council's Bills Committee on Tuesday. Meanwhile, Secretary for Development Paul Chan said in a blog post that in the first quarter of next year, the government will launch a 15-month feasibility study on developing the new territory's north area. The study will include the Fanling Golf Course and Fanling Lodge, the traditional summer retreat of Hong Kong's top leader. At least 89 people have been killed and more than 100 injured in a stampede after a bridge collapsed near a remote Hindu temple in central India. Officials say tens of thousands of devotees have gathered to celebrate a holy festival at the temple. But a bridge leading to the temple collapsed, tri triggering the stampede. Authorities have ordered a judicial inquiry into the incident. The number of casualties from the most powerful storm to hit India in more than a decade has been relatively light, with only 17 deaths reported so far. As Tony Sabine reports, the cyclone still packed a powerful punch, destroying thousands of homes and causing widespread damage. And to the United States now, where Congress and the White House had another missed opportunity to end a government shutdown and avoid a debt default. The October 17th deadline is only four days away, and as Sonia Terror reports, there is still no deal in sight. U.S. whistleblower Edward Snowden may be a criminal to authorities in America, but to some former U.S. government officials, he is a hero. They presented Snowden with the Sam Adams Award for Integrity in Intelligence. In his acceptance speech, Snowden criticized U.S. surveillance methods as dangerous to democracy. This is about a trend in the relationship between the governing and the government in America that is coming increasingly into conflict with what we expect as a free and democratic people. If we can't understand the policies and programs of our government, we cannot grant our consent in regulating. The video, released by Wikileaks, was reportedly shot this past week in Moscow, where Snowden was granted asylum in August. The Americans who were ordered Snowden once worked for the Central Intelligence Agency, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, the Justice Department and the NSA. Snowden is still considered a US fugitive charged with espionage. Tens of thousands of people lined the streets of Hanoi today to bid farewell to Vo Win Jap, the general who led Vietnam to victory over France and then the US. Some cried, others cheered in salute as his flag-draped coffin passed by on a truck-drawn carriage. The procession travelled along a 40-kilometre route from the National Funeral House in central Hanoi to the airport. 
Nicknamed the Red Napoleon, Jap is considered one of the greatest generals in the 20th century for his victories over vastly better equipped armies, which ended French colonial rule and ensured communist control of Vietnam. Back locally, thousands of people paid tribute to, to their ancestors during the Chongyang festival today. Some complained the price of paper offerings was more expensive this year than last year. Rachel Long reports. In sports, some great pitching performances in the American and National League Championship Series. In Boston, the Detroit Tigers flirted with a no-hitter against the Red Sox. Jameson Wong has highlights. Jeremy Lin and the Houston Rockets defeated the Indiana Pacers in an NBA preseason game played in Taiwan. A capacity crowd of nearly 14,000 fans packed the Taipei Arena. Lin, whose parents emigrated from Taiwan to the United States in the 70s, scored 17 points. He also had four assists and a blocked shot. The final score was 107-98. James Harden led Houston with 21 points, while Dwight Howard added 10 points and 6 rebounds. And tonight's winning Mark 6 numbers are 24, 28, 35, 37, 42, 48. And the extra number is 38. And tomorrow's weather is shaping up to bring us mainly cloudy skies with a couple of rain patches. Temperatures should range between 25 and 28 degrees. And in the next couple of days, we can expect windy weather and cooler temperatures. That's the news. Thanks for watching.